Shabbat Shalom to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. What's going on, Israel? We here in L.A., our Sabbath hasn't officially started, but we got a couple more hours. By the time this class is over, the Sabbath should have started by now. But Shabbat Shalom to everybody tapped in. Hope everybody's having a great week and a great Sabbath so far. Yeah, welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Episode 9. Is it number 9? Number 9. Well, uh, I think it's only fair. Let them know where you went. Um, all praise be to the Most High, first and foremost. I know a lot of people, they, they see Israel traveling to these different countries, and I, I think they think we're out there for vacationing and having a good time. It's an escape, for sure. You know, you leave in Babylon to go to these other places, but you get to these other countries and realize we're still cursed, you know, so it's not what people think. But all praise be to the Most High. Uh, myself, along with the bishops, we traveled to the Philippines, Cebu, to go see our church family out there. Shout out to Zabad and all the True Nation family in the Philippines. And let me just tell y'all, man, it was such a beautiful trip. Like, it's refreshing to not only, because we teach these scriptures, but it's so refreshing when you're traveling and you see these scriptures come to life. Like, it seems like you'd be battling tooth and nail trying to get people here in America to believe what this Bible is saying. And then you read about the works of the apostles, and they was going out and getting thousands by the day. But every time we go to these other countries and we start teaching this word like how they've never heard it before, their eyes are just, like, open with amazement. Like, oh, my God, like, what is this right now? And it didn't help that, like, it was different from Africa because, you know, everybody's dark-skinned. I only saw, like, four dark, dark-skinned people. Like, it was only three people I seen, like, to Zion out there. They kept calling uh, Bishop Isar James Harden. <laughs> they called, uh... Your Kwatiza curry. But, you know, all in all, it was a beautiful trip. It's amazing to me the amount of history that our people don't know. Because I've seen the comments online. People was like, oh, why y'all going over there to teach the heathen? Y'all dumb. We literally, upon our first few days there, bro, they was telling us the history. The island that we was on is called Cebu. Across is an island called Negros. Negro, black, right? That was a huge island known for its slavery of black people, especially the ones that came from Japan, right? So here's the thing. They say Cebu is basically a little Negros. Like the people you're going to see on Cebu is the, basically the same people you're going to see on Negros. And you see a lot of our people, what we would call Hispanic or, you know, Mexican. You see a lot of people out there that look like that. Even, you know, south of the border, you start going to, like, Peru. I've seen a gang of people that look like Elgin Sazara. So we get there, and they're telling us about this island. Like, man, okay. They didn't know that. Not only do they have an island called Negros, which they reference as Judah, right? But they have another island that's called Samar. And what do you think that's short for? Samaria. Samaria. So you got Samaria and then you got Judah. You got both kingdoms <laughs> identifying in the Philippines, thousands upon thousands of miles away. That's dope. They got a, a, a whole month, which is January, where that's their month to show out and represent their tribe. And the way that they go about doing that is rocking fringes. Like, you can't make this up. <laughs> That's wild. You, you literally yeah. can't make this up. So, you know, just that and just being able to deal with the people, it, it was a, a blessing, bro. It, it really was. I'm happy to be back home, obviously, but it was good to see our family out there. So, like, in what way, I guess, did you feel connected personally to the people there? Mm. It's cold because a lot of people, we bond off of trauma. Uh -huh. But... Some of the things was a little less dark. Uh, for example, the food, it felt like home. They like eating fried chicken and spaghetti. <laughs> I feel like black people eat spaghetti more than Italians, you know? So the fact that, and I had the best fried chicken of my life when we went over there. Somebody made it or? Is at, it, a, at a resort. resort. Oh, okay. Fire. Like, I don't even know what I can compare it to. Like, whoever got the best wings in L.A., they, they right there with them. But, uh, so the food, the music. But the curses, bro, you see the curses out there. Uh, it's a lot of single women, uh, not single women, single mothers. Mm -hmm. That's known, you know, like, yeah, the men, they, they get these women pregnant and just bounce. Same thing we're dealing with here. Uh, obviously, they're in impoverished conditions. Um, and everybody's just grinding, bro. Like, you just see the curses in full effect. So that was the comforting part to know, like, because when you travel out of the country, it's always like that, ooh, how do I know if I'm really around my people? It's comforting to know, like, okay, yeah, we the same cursed people. You know, we all trying to find a way out. We all looking for that hope. So that's why I feel, you know, just so much better about myself when I'm able to go there and share the word of the Most High. Like, look, this is your hope. You probably didn't know why you was going through what you was going through before, but this is your hope. 
and to see how they receive it is so refreshing, bro. So when I think about like Israel all over the places mm -hmm. that we're scattered, mm -hmm. I like to think of it like seasoning. Okay. So it's like it's a whole bunch of different flavors and style and twists we put onto it. Huh. So what would you say is like the Philippines flavor when it comes to something Israel? Yeah. That's a that's a good question. Um it's mm, a very good question. Like what they got that's so pure that you don't see as often in our neighborhoods? I'm going to have to say, and I don't even know if this all the way goes along with it, but the mentality. Mm -hmm. um, like here in America, the closest thing I've seen to that is like Hispanics. Like you know how they're a lot more family oriented compared to like black families? Yeah. The women there are raised with the mentality of you're going to be a wife one day and you should know how to treat your husband. That's the furthest thing that we're hearing here in the States. You know, we're being taught you don't need no man, and if you got one, if he ain't doing this, then F him. That's not the common thought out there. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it saddens me to know that even with women being raised in that type of mindset, you still have men, you know, making the curses come to life. But I think that was the thing that stood out to me the most. Um, very respectful they have a very respectful culture and they don't have anything that's the humbling part it's like wow to to see our people you you're literally in shacks and huts mm -hmm. but you have all the respect for a man based off the fact that he's a man of your nation right, right. You, they wasn't saying it about you need to have a honey can your bank account you ain't got to be this tall or any of those other superficial things our people talk about to basically say this is what you need to get basic respect from me they just had it off the rip that was like the one thing that stood out to me the most yeah, so in a sense, it's still a better sense of community and love for your neighbor. For sure, for sure. Um, it was a little bit different in Ghana, um, but then again, it is an island, so I guess it's just a little bit different all facts, but um, the the community aspect is huge there, you know. So what would you say is like, how is the connection to the Most High? there in comparison it's, it's to the same thing bro like you know paul talked about it our people have a zeal for god but it's just not according to knowledge uh -huh. like out there they even have a harder time taking you serious if you don't even have a building that you worship in okay. so that's why you know um our filipino chapter has been having its struggles because we don't have a building yet you know but we know the building is the children of israel right. we come together and the most high spirit is in the midst of us but out there they want to serve the most high they're just like where's your building at and, you know, they're hell-bent on Christianity and Islam is out there. That was one thing that was cool. You traveling around, you get to see restaurants, no pork, no pork, or halal. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. But, you know, they have a zeal. They have a zeal. And the thing is, when we was talking to them, nobody really even rejected the fact that, okay, yeah, we the people of the book, and it's just the law. You start talking about these laws, and it's like, well, my pastor, and that's not my, my family. They believe. It's like, I know, but you got to got to tear all that down to be reborn, you know, in all aspects. So that's the thing. It's sad, though, because uh, even that far away, thousands of miles on an island with all these dark people, they still got pictures of a white Jesus. He didn't travel the world and just destroyed our people, destroyed us. Mm. Well, I guess my last question then would be, like, what kind of effect has it had on you? coming back home? It's a very great question. For me, everything is always a balancing act, uh -huh. you know, because you can feel very strongly and passionately about things and even attempt to put certain things in motion because thus saith the Lord, but then there's the reality you have to deal with. So again, I think just the mentality of the women, I wish that was something that could be implemented more here in America. You know, with no strings attached, just like, oh, you're a man keeping the law the most high. I respect you. What you need? How can I help? Very helpful out there, you know. And um, I think it just shines more light on the work that we do. It, it makes it that much more real. Like, damn. Th because, you know, we traveled west to go to Ghana. And it was about 16 or 17 hours. We flew all the way east this time. <laughs> and it took like 20-something hours to get there. So it's like... When the scriptures say we're literally scattered under all nations and all these different aisles, you know, it's humbling because it's just like, man, we really tr we serve the one true living God, you know, and it kind of just makes you look at things a little bit more serious because 
when the Most High said, like, oh, yeah, if you break these laws, you sin, this is what's going to happen. And he also said, but if you keep my laws, this is what I'm going to bless you with. All we focus on is the curses, but now it's just like, man, I really see how we're going to get the blessings by doing the right thing. If we got all this hell and all this bad stuff happening because we disobeyed, why, why do we think that we won't get the blessings that's going to come with obedience? That, that's really just the biggest takeaway for me. It just shines light on the whole scripture. It just It really it makes me magnify the most high because I'm like, man, because you've been said it. Right. I wasn't here in Deuteronomy. At least I don't think so. But here we are thousands of years later, not only reading but seeing with our own eyes what the most high spelled out. Yeah, like the prophecy is our history. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's humbling, bro. Yeah. So that, that's honestly my biggest takeaway. It's just like, man, sh shout out to God, you know. God. You know, and uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good feeling, too, because we come back here. And that's one thing I do encourage people to do. If you haven't traveled outside of the United States in this truth, do it. You will see how this place is Babylon the Great, bro. This place has a spirit on it. I kid you not, before we even touched down in LAX, we still in the air hours away. I just felt the spirit come on me like, yep, <laughs> welcome back to hell. This place is, man, the, the mother of all harlots. To see people, and it's crazy too, because you see people in those other countries and they lust to come to America, not even knowing that they're so much better off where they're at. Yeah, you're poor. Yeah, you don't have all the resources and things like that, but your spirit and your mentality is so much more pure. You're going to come over here and get all the money you want, drive all the cars you want, and you're going to be corrupted. You know, and it's sad because it's slowly making its way to the Philippines. Like, we've seen a bunch of homosexuals out there, and we like, man, like, this is accepted out here? It's like, yeah, we're just learning to accept it. I'm just like, damn. Same thing in Africa. They, they, they target in Accra. That's like baby L.A. or baby New York. All the celebrities are flying there, bringing their poison, and the people, they eating it up, taking it to the villages, and you just watch it spread. You know? Crazy. Thank you for those questions, though. I haven't even had a full in-depth talk with anybody yet about, about the trip. We talked about the funny moments and everything, but it kind of brings it full circle to even what we're talking about today, which is purpose, patience, and repentance, right? So I got something I want to ask you. And before we do that, let's get a scripture real quick. Go to Jeremiah chapter 40. And I think I want verse 2. Let me see real quick. Verse 3. Jeremiah 40 and verse 3. Uh-huh. Now the Lord hath brought it and done according as he has said. So just like we were talking about, the Most High had been said what was going to happen thousands of years ago, and yet it came to pass. We're seeing it. Go ahead. Because ye have sinned against the Lord. And then everybody is in such an uproar trying to figure out why us, why these conditions, not even knowing it's because of our sins. Go ahead. And have not obeyed his voice. Because of our disobedience, we have the reality that we have now as a people. These broken homes, these, these streets that are dirty, corrupted with crime and greed and murder. This is what we get from disobeying the Most High. He took his protection off of us as a people. Go ahead. Therefore, this thing has come upon you. So make no mistake, this is why this thing has come upon you. So with reading that scripture, it brings me to this question. Okay, so here's the thing. When you're dealing with people in the world, because I know therapy culture is big now, right? It's uh, before they used to clown people for going to therapy. Like, oh, you must really be going through something. You need help. But like, yeah, we really be going through stuff, right? So therapy is common now. When we're dealing with our people, a lot of people will say that they fill a void and they're even living lifestyles and doing things that's outside of their care because they haven't truly found a purpose. So my question to you is, when do you think people should find their purpose? Or what is the thing that causes them to look to find that purpose? Example, you got certain people who grow up in families, right? Uh, you're the kid and you, you're up next to run the family business. At some point, they have a talk with you like, hey, this is what's gonna be for your life moving forward. You're gonna continue this legacy and running this business. At that point, they're like, okay, cool. I know what my purpose is, right? Or maybe uh, for some people, it may be their career. You five years into your job trying to climb the corporate ladder, and you say, I, I think I found my purpose. I want to be this for this. 
when do, what is it do you what is that thing that causes people to find their purpose uh that's a tough question first or um, what should it be uh the way that i think about it when you think about finding your purpose you're thinking about life you're thinking about your name you're thinking about your reputation you're thinking about the environment you're growing up in or you're living in so ultimately, first thing, I, I, is I feel like there's a lot of people that don't understand life itself when it comes to defining a purpose for themselves. Because you're going to create a purpose based upon some type of satisfaction or some type of goal you want or something that you're looking for for comfort or something like that. But then in reality, it's going based upon the things you, do, you know and the things you don't know. So your knowledge and your ignorance. So us growing up here in L.A. and all of the stuff we've been involved in, it doesn't, it doesn't always have our best interest because we haven't ex been exposed to all of the good things that we can do and a good understanding of life to understand what kind of purpose you can have. Right. Is you feel like people's options of purpose is limited. Very. Okay. I like where we're going with this. Very. Um, cause, because here's the thing is, a lot of us are trying to figure stuff out on our own mm -hmm. versus being guided, mentored, or developed in the aspect of um, to have a purpose or have a, uh, something you're wanting to accomplish that's going to help accelerate or help uh, build upon something that's already established. Yeah. A lot of people want to establish stuff themselves. That's true. And that's uh, also a selfish thing. So we're not even being taught that the sense of community and building upon what the people before us have already started. Mm. So, um, you know, so I, I think ultimately, though, too, purpose and things like that are, aren't taught very well or taught thoroughly or even in a sense of uh, taught for the benefit of not only an individual but their people. Okay. I, I like that a lot. Would you say that a lot of people in most cases are like they're looking for the fulfillment of things before they actually find a purpose? Yes. Like you said, like they, they're, they're kind of chasing something, but it's like so misguided. I feel like once they get anything, they're just holding on to it like, I did it and I made it. I feel like a lot of people are desperate. Yeah, for sure. For sure. A lot of people have been hurt mm -hmm. and they run away from being hurt, but the reality of it is you got to get hurt in order <laughs> to have some type of success. <laughs> uh, but I, I think that a lot of people have been hurt for so long to the point where they just would do anything so that they don't feel any kind of pain. Mm. And that could become dangerous because that's not something that... Um, Subdeacon Nash. That's not something that you're not... Um, you don't get that much discipline in mm. or to understand the discipline, to know the process of purpose. Uh. You know, so... It, it is kind of difficult, uh, especially if you ain't really ain't got nobody that's going that one you can trust because right. <laughs> people got a lot of trust issues. And then two, we, we've had a lot of faulty leaders to the point where it is hard to trust people. Um, but it's also in a situation of knowing how to take what you got and know how to make the best out of it. And, you know, ultimately, just, you know, get your achievements. Because at the end of the day, I always say, you know, we come from Jacob. Right. Israel, prevail. Like, mm. we overcome. That's what we're supposed to do, overcome our obstacles. But a lot of people, we get weak. We quit. That's true. You know, we give up hope, you know, just because we want to escape mm. versus, you know, fight through it and, you know, get what we feel like we earn. Okay. So with us, because I don't want to dig too into the point that I'm trying to get you to expound on with us being in the truth do you feel like we should all have the same purpose or do you feel like even within this understanding people have different purposes overall overall uh, I feel like if you have a foundation set in your purpose it doesn't matter like if you have small 
reference is, everybody understands this is where we're trying to go. I may have to get here on a scooter, but I know this is where we're trying to get. You may get there on a bus, but I understand this is where we're going. You feel me? I agree with you 100%, and that's why I uh, even want to go to the scripture about it, uh, which we all should know is the Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So off top, uh, that's a solid foundation for anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. Like you just said, that's our destination. No matter how you get there, just get there. You know, and we all got our different ways of transporting or, you know, our process of getting there. And, of course, we all going to have a different story because we all have different circumstances and everything like that. Right. However, the foundation is keeping the law at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Now, I like to think of it in the sense of um, the aspect of discipline. Whatever talent or passion that the Most High is giving you, he's giving you a set of skill, he's giving you a set of knowledge, he's giving you a set of understanding and wisdom to be able to provide something like scripture talks about us being fruitful to make something we're gods we're supposed to create (laughs) so at the end of the day how you create is going to differ from person from person however the discipline is so similar and the same across the board that you should get the same understanding that i get even if we have different fields or if we work in different fields that's fire you feel me because at the end of the day we're a nation of people right uh, like, you know, and then, of course, as much as you understand your field, it's going to help you understand the scriptures, it's going to help you understand the universe, it's going to help you understand your people. So, for example, I always bring it up, music. Yeah. Music is a whole bunch of sounds coming together. Uh, All of these different sounds, they got different parts, they got different roles that they play. They, even how you make the sound is different. Right, right. Some stuff you banging, some stuff is screeching, some stuff is vibration. You know, so it's like... All of these different sounds, when it's perfectly blended together, it's going to make beautiful music. Mm. You get me? But they all got the same goal. It's one song. Exactly, exactly. That's <laughs> so, why that was a dope analogy. So it's the same thing, but it, it's the same thing when it comes to cooking and different seasoning and flavoring. It's the same thing with working out. It's the same thing with teaching and talking to people. It's the same thing with all of it. Everything has an art behind it that you should you know, really study and get involved in because there's people that's been doing it before you. And also, too, you have a contribution you could bring to that. But ultimately, the same discipline that it takes to be successful in that mm-hmm. is the same exact discipline that it needs to be successful in the law. Mm. So I like where the conversation's going. It, it's really coming full circle to the last question I wanted to ask you because your average person, they should have that understanding. Like, okay, cool. So now it begs the question, why, once we come into this knowledge, you understand where we're supposed to be going. You, you found your purpose, the thing that you was dying for. The, the mm-hmm. thing that you was looking for was looking for you the whole time. You found it, and it found you. You understand your purpose, but why do we run from it now once we're in this truth? If you, you, ex- you said it perfectly earlier. Our foundation and our purpose is the keeping of these laws because with that, we'll be able to travel to the Most High. We get our wow. kingdom and all the perks. Why, once... Or in this truth, do we struggle with our purpose? You know, it's crazy. I feel like it's the same reason why a lot of people are out of shape. Okay. You know, and I don't mean that in any disrespectful way, but it's kind of like everybody has that desire to have a good physique. Mm -hmm. But it's just the discipline that stops them from getting to that point. Um, It's challenging. (laughs) It's hard. It's not supposed to be easy. It's actually difficult. But if it's going to become to the situation of where's your determination, where's your faith, and where's your works? Because if you could get past that part, that's the mental part behind it, you know, then, you know, you will will have, you will reap the benefits of it, you know. But it's the same thing with anything else. Like, yeah, you have a purpose now, but you got to practice it. You got to put it into use. And some people, they run from their calling because the same analogy that I gave earlier about how there's kids who they know one day they're gonna have to take over business these are these same people that be running off skipping state trying to get away like I don't want to do that and you have to you got to understand and love your purpose you know it's crazy too 
in those types of situations, I feel like a lot of people get turned off or, you know, rebel against it because they don't see it in a way where they could mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. Now, even when it comes to the aspect of being parents or leaders, like, you're not going to create a direct replica of yourself. You have to cultivate with what, you know, that person that you're training has right. so it could be the best potential out of them. Right. And that could, they could still accelerate what you already got going on. Right. Right. And a lot of times we don't have that as a... Uh, I feel like a lot of times we be looking for that type of guidance, but the reality of it is that the only way you're going to be very successful is if you, if you truly know yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, if this is your calling, your duty, make it a way where it's, you're comfortable with it. Not only comfortable, comfortable is not the right word, but more so in a way that you could still get the job done that feels best suited for your type of personality, your type of spirit, your type of soul, because ultimately you still got to do the job. You know, but it's just kind of like you could change the way how it's done because you probably haven't seen it done in a way that you want it to be done. Exactly. But you could still get that job done. Exactly. What they say, it's a, a thousand ways to skin a cat. Shalom, how you doing? Yeah, Good to see sis. you again, sis. Kyle. It's like uh, when the people say it's like a thousand ways to skin a cat. No one said there's a, a one way to get this job done. Exactly. Find out the way that's best suited for you and the, the abilities and skills that the most high imparted to you. Exactly. And even with you saying that, it kind of makes me think about the culture of Israel at large because there's such an emphasis, and I don't want to downplay it at all because it's needed, but there's such an emphasis on the street teaching. And that's you see it in the scriptures. We do it. Brothers do it. But there's such an emphasis on that that I feel like people who have certain gifts that can be used feel discouraged in a way because it's like, dang, well, okay, these are works, but... I feel like I could, you know, give in a different way, still help fly, still bring in the sheep. I feel like Israel needs to, uh, maybe it comes with maturity too, but the scriptures is like, it talks about it, how there's different offices. The leg can't do what the toe going to do. The toe can't do what the eye going to do. And I feel like people sometimes, even within finding their purpose, it's not detailed for them because they don't have the, the avenues for them. Like, man, this is the, the way I would best work for the most high in this lane. Agreed. You know, like we need to open up them them lanes for people. And I'm glad a lot more of Israel is doing that. You got people coming out in all different, you know, styles. of They got sports, music, entertainment, food. Like all of these things are becoming more and more popular within the Israelite community uh, for ministry purposes. Uh, Before, people was just doing trying to kick, but it's like, nah, this can be fruitful to, to the winning of souls, uh, you know? It's crazy, man. But, um, you know, going back to the, the thing that you were saying about discipline, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon real quick. And I want to add that for those people struggling with that, it's safe to say that they lack the Holy Spirit. And the reason why is because of this scripture that I'm about to read right now. I want Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, and let's read verse 1. Let's start at verse 1. Uh, chapter 1 and verse 1. Love righteousness. So <laughs> that's a cold way to start. Love righteousness. Mm -hmm. It's so many things our people love. Right. And even that, that bar that Bishop Tzaiwan said, some people that you love hate God. Everybody don't love the right thing. So off top, we're supposed to love righteousness. Go ahead. Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Uh huh. Think of the Lord with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart seek him. So even understanding how certain people, they come to the Most High with a certain mindset that isn't right to begin with. If you understand your purpose, you understand that your purpose is to serve. You know, like and when you were saying earlier how some people, they find themselves in them situations where they want to run away from their responsibilities is because they selfish sometimes you got to do things in life that's going to benefit you per se but it's going to be a help to your people and your nation you feel me go ahead verse two for he will be found of them that tempt him not mm -hmm. and showeth himself unto such as do do not distrust him and then you got so many people wondering like well where's god you don't even believe in on to begin with right why are he gonna show up and try to prove something to you that you really don't even want to be proved you know, and it's like with the whole thing with Abraham when he almost, you know, made him sacrifice his son. Like, why would he have him do that? The Most High already knew he would. But, like, yeah, it wasn't for the Most High. It was for Abraham to know what he was made of. Like, oh, yeah, like, I really do this. I really believe in God. 
People don't have that type of thought towards the most high. They come in doubting. So he's not going to go above and beyond and show himself for you. Go ahead. For forward thoughts separate from God uh -huh. and his power. When it is tried, reprove it the unwise. Go ahead. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. Wisdom is not going to enter into a malicious soul. You somebody who never wanted to do the right thing, you always got something bad to say, finding excuses to badmouth the most high ultimately, you're never going to be wise. Go ahead. Nor dwell in a body that is subject, that is subject to, unto sin. Now, here's the part that you were speaking about. Read verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. I ain't never, I ain't never heard in the Christian church that any of the attributes of the Holy Spirit was discipline. <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just let it take over. <laughs> Just let it take over, baby. And what do I do? Just open your mouth and ah, la, 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 la. How... <laughs> And then you got other scriptures that say it's wisdom, knowledge, understanding. But this one specifically, for the Holy Spirit of discipline, go ahead. Will flee deceit. A lot of our people are deceiving themselves. Mm. And you will never retain that spirit of the most high. All right. We got to talk about that deceit then. Mm -hmm. Because even the scripture, and I think it's in Proverbs, when it said it's a way that look right to a man. Ooh, should we get it? Let's go. Uh, deceit. So it says, uh, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. So there's different things that are going to entice us. There's different things that's going to have influence on us. There's different things that's going to try to distract us. Uh, but ultimately, before it does any of that, it has to process through your mind. So it's kind of like, so part of it is whatever the other entity or object is. Yeah. The other part of it is how you're processing it within yourself. If you allow it to take over, then you still, in a sense, have accountability of deceiving yourself. Because we've all been through that where you have that conversation with yourself. Exactly. It's, a, it's, a, it's a conversation that's had, and then there's a decision that's made. And there's, yeah, exactly. It's the conversation, the thoughts, mm -hmm. the processing of it. And then even if you was to do something impulsive and it was a mistake, you're going to reflect back on it okay. to the point where it's like, oh, I probably wasn't in control at that moment. Let me make sure that I'm more aware if that situation come again, exactly. that I won't run into the same problem again. Exactly. Uh, you found the scripture? Yeah, I found it. Let me read that for you. Uh, this is Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. So it said it seems right, meaning that you've done, you've made a way to make it make sense to where it seemed like it was the right answer or the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But in reality, that could have been the right thing based upon your emotions God. or based upon how you was feeling God. or, you know, based upon your self, um, what's the word, like, a selfish thought right, in a sense, right. you know, like, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. But in the reality of it, it's like, yo, if you only going to do it to serve yourself or you're doing it for another reason or a cause that's not, you know, uh, fruitful, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, you're, you're deceiving yourself. You're making yourself believe in something that's not that bad to be or something that's going to bring you happiness as if, um lost my train of thought. You, you're thinking about it as if it's something that's going to bring you happiness, but the reality of it is that you're not thinking about the overall purpose okay. of what it should be or how it's supposed to be. What's more of a, because obviously there's things, we have a life. You got to make decisions for yourself, for your household, for your family. But what's a more responsible, mature, and like holistic approach to like things like that because we, we battle stuff when you're faced with like adversity and things that could potentially compromise you instead of going into that selfish thought how should somebody be processing that because that's one thing here and i don't know about the rest of the world but lausd didn't teach us how to be critical thinkers uh -huh. <laughs> most people don't know how to critically think and they make you know rash decisions like well like you said this is how i'm feeling or you know this is most convenient what's what's more a, a more holistic approach to that uh, I think ultimately, first and foremost, is trusting in the most high. Okay, kind. Because ultimately, you do have a sense of what's right and what's wrong, mm -hmm. even if you don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't need an explanation. You just need to go with what seems right. Okay. So, you know, a lot of times it's, um, I like to think of it as in a sense of like, 
there are certain areas and times where we just play it safe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> play it safe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't put yourself in a position where it's going to be more tempting or more difficult or something you might regret later on. And also, too, don't, don't, don't give up on integrity because even if, you know, it might be the right thing to do and nobody might recognize it or you may not feel like there's a, um, there's a, a, a benefit from it, that doesn't mean that the most high doesn't see it still. Exactly. You know, and that doesn't mean that a blessing can, may not come later on from it. Exactly. So I, I think ultimately it's like, one, process it, trust in the most high. And if you got to play it safe, play it safe. It's better to play it safe than, you know, possibly be sorry, you know. And, um, because, of course, you know, there's going to always be situations where we may take a risk, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes the risk, like kind of like in the Abraham situation, that was a risk. Yeah. But he, he was so solidified in his faith, though. He said, it's a risk I'm willing to take. Exactly. Like, like you said, sometimes you don't need no explanation. I don't see where he asked the most high, like, God, why you want me to sacrifice my son? He said, Abraham, give me your kid. He said, bet. Uh, he didn't need no explanation. He said, this is my God who has proven himself to be a power in my life. Uh, I trust in this because it's bigger than me. Uh, you, you wake up every day. You can't even look at the sun. God created that. Why would I distrust him? Uh, and that's why even like dealing with the deceit that she was just going into, I feel like it's levels to it because we can only think of things from a, a such a, a mortal, you know, Shalom it would be so hard for us to ever try to think like the most high, uh, but then you understand how disrespectful certain things could be. And it's like, you see it a little bit in parallel when you start having kids, but for us to even deceive ourselves, right? For example, let's use Adam and Eve. Eve already got the direction was told what it was. Satan comes and says, God said, you can't do that. Cause you're going to die. Her thought was, yeah, maybe you're right. But how disrespectful was that to God? Because you basically calling him a liar to deceive yourself uh, into doing what it is you want to do at that time. Uh, That's why we, I feel like when we're dealing with this truth, and this is to piggyback off of your answer with the more holistic approach to just critical thinking and breaking things down, think of it from a standpoint of a servant. Uh, what I do is not just going to fall upon me. It's going to fall upon who I serve. He may feel a type of way about it. Or my fellow servants. It's not just you. We have to make decisions based off of the community as a whole. Uh, you know, outside of the obvious things, it's like, what my, what my family going to eat tonight, you know? <laughs> I think ultimately a lot of times, we, a lot of people get caught up in feeling like they're alone or they're lonely or, you know, it's just them. But like you said, we serve a power. Uh, if there's anything, it's like, of course, you don't want to disappoint yourself, mm-hmm. but sometimes people don't, they get desperate or they don't care enough to be like, you know, they'll just hurt themselves. You know, there's people that hurt themselves all the time, all right. you know, but the reality is that you don't want to hurt the most high or disappoint him, exactly. Exactly. you know. And the last thing I would say about it, too, is that uh, as far as the holistic approach from it, you know how, like, you be on Instagram or social media and something just gets stuck in your head? You got to always read because it's kind of like as you think about stuff, you're going to be able to process more scriptures, especially if it's something you read recently. Mm-hmm. You know, so like that is always going to be in the back of your thoughts and mind at times. And I don't know if it works that way for you, but it feels like every time I read, it's always something that I needed to see. Right. Like, damn, you know, all praises. I've been scratching my head about this one or certain decisions you want to make in life and not being hasty, being patient. Uh, because I think a lot of people – not only lack patience, but they all together lose it. The little bit that they had, they lose it because they don't see the Most High doing certain thing from them. Come. And because the Most High, he told us about our people. He said the Jews require a sign. He, he knows his creation. We have to see something that's going to make us a believer. Come. It's like people getting into all sorts of businesses, and they talking about, man, I done made all this money online. It's like, bro, make it in real life. Let me really see it before I, you know, I get into this business venture with you. Right. So I get it, but then I feel like that's where the humility needs to come in because you may have a certain expectation of what you want God to do for you and you start overlooking the things he is doing for you. Uh, Off top, the fact that you're waking up, he's doing wonders for your day, but you may be looking for a certain blessing and because that certain blessing hasn't came, now you get ready to give up on the most high and you start moving hasty, doing your own thing, losing your purpose and losing your focus. Uh, you get spoiled. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, dude, it, again, if you understood that you're a servant, a servant has 
option but to wait on his master. Uh. That's it. Uh. If your master was gone for two months and he got the steward of the house, you just got to hold it down till they get back. Uh. And back then it wasn't no like, hey, where you at, sirs? You had to wait for real. That's and that's the real. crazy part. All this convenience has made things so inconvenient for our people. <laughs> right. We have all of the technology in the world to make us closer than ever. And guess what? People are more distant than ever. Uh, I've never heard about any of my grandparents or anybody, they friends, every, like, low self-esteem, uh, social anxiety. Like, how do you develop all of these things in a first world country? Right. Quote, unquote. And then you got people that got to take a shovel or bucket with them to go use the bathroom, and they have all of these gifts and more. True. It's just wild. But then again, that's why I said it, it really just shines light on the place that we're at. This is the, the belly of the beast. You know, the, the cage of every unclean and foul spirit. And we'd be wondering why people's spirits be jacked up because you're a product of Babylon. You know, and there needs to be more conversations and more than just conversations, how we're doing. There needs to be more building and examples being shown on how people can escape this place. We're building with the youth. We're building with the babies. We're building with the teens. We're building with the women and the men, showing them this is the standard that the Most High has set us to be. This is how you're living, and this is how you need to change. That's simple. Like, it's, it's easier said than done a lot of times. you on the corner yelling, you need to change. Keep the law. And it's like, okay, but I've never been taught. There needs to be more of a, a willingness for people to become like understudies of people. You uh, need to have mentors, agreed. both men and women. All, all of the world's most renowned and successful people, they have them. Kings have them. Josiah took the throne at, at eight years old. You think he was just calling the shots? No, he had men that was raising and teaching him, like, hey, this would be the best interest of the kingdom. This is why. Educating the, the – and it's crazy, too. It's a side point. Another big takeaway for me for the Philippines was the fact that the kids over there don't have the luxury of being kids. And what I mean by that is here in America, there's this big push for, oh, just let the kids be kids. A lot of these children in these third and second world countries are more of a man than your average man is here in America. <laughs> they know how to go out and run businesses. They know how to feed their families, and here, it'd be a kid 10 years old, don't know how to boil water. So what do you think the balance on that is? Because this is something I was talking with brothers recently about, because I have conversations with my daughter. You know how Khalila is. She, she understands. So I talk to her. I don't even want to have her thinking, like, oh, I'm just going to be a kid forever. I'm already telling her, baby, you can't do this because one day you're going to be a wife and your husband won't appreciate this. It's not acceptable. You have to do this. So I'm already putting things into her. But there has to be a balance. The scripture said there's a balance with everything. Uh. Do you think the way that we're raising our kids is going to prepare them for what the scripture say is coming? A lot of these kids, like, you're, you're keeping them away from certain conversations because you don't want them to hear grown-up stuff. But it's like, dude, if we're supposed to be preparing our souls for war, it's civil unrest coming everywhere, bombs, all of that. Do we really have the option of letting the kids be kids? No. Uh, well, I'll put it in two different ways. I feel like a great teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like it's a combination of entertainment and education. Mm -hmm. You could always make a way for your kids to love to learn. I believe that wholeheartedly. Okay. Uh, and I do believe we have that liberty of trying to make that a way. Because even when it comes to like, certain songs and stuff like that, they may not understand this, you know, the, the in-depths of a song. However, they could catch on to a song easily. It might be a simple tune to them, but in reality, it could be a big lesson for them that they might not realize until they're years older. So, you know, I, I say that in the sense of like, of course, it needs more effort into putting it, um, into raising the children and they shouldn't, uh, of course, you don't want anything to be grievous, to, you know, because that's not how we're supposed to be. Um, but ultimately, um, hiding reality from the children is a disservice. I, I agree. And that's the part where it's like it's just you just need to have those conversations with them. Yeah. And they have to be involved in those conversations as well to see that, all right, this is really how things are. 
And uh, ultimately, too, is that, you know, you can't spoil or stop them from being hurt as well. Uh, they got to have challenges that they overcome. They got to go through the wilderness. As a kid, because it's only going to get bigger exactly. as they become adults. So it's like we can't stop them from or try to limit or, you know, protect them from all of that type of stuff. Like, no, they got to fight. Yeah. And, you know, it's crazy because <sighs> – we we don't understand the level of protection that we had as a people because everything that we're experiencing in the world right now has been here since the jump. Oh. The difference was the Most High had us in the midst of it, but we was protected. He took his protection off, so now we just we fall to the wayside. Any anything that's out there is just tearing us up. But with not because remember Kahan, he always asked this like, I guess like who would be better fit long term speaking kids that was born and raised in the truth or people that spent time in the world and then came to the most high. And it was always that back and forth. It was like, well, people in the world, they got the experience of the world. So they made more of a conscious effort to ditch that and, and forsake that to come to the most high compared to certain kids. Well, this is all they've known and they've been sheltered and protected from all that evil. So they never had to really bump their head as much. But I feel like there needs to be a balance. Agreed. These kids they're out in the world. They see stuff when you out with them. You need to be talking about it and explaining. My whole thing is I'd rather tell you than the world tell you because huh. the world's going to try to tell you in a way to where it's okay and you may be interested in trying it. I'm going to explain it in a way to where you know what's going on and you're never going to want to mess with it. I feel ultimately, too, is that like as, parents or <clears throat> as parents and as leaders, you should always be the biggest influence on mm -hmm. your children mm -hmm. because it's – through all of the stuff that's going on, it might be interesting at some point. It might be tempting at some right. point, but it ain't as interesting or influential as what we could provide for that child, exactly. you know? And I think that's something that a lot of parents, in the truth, you know, and out the truth, lack mm -hmm. as far as being that hero that they, you know, used to be for their mm -hmm. children or being that, that person that the kids could look up to or that person that, like, all right, I, I see the importance or, like, I, I want to mimic certain great traits that they have, you know? I feel that 100%. 100%. And I remember a brother speaking about that. He, like, you know, when I was coming up, my favorite superhero wasn't Batman or Superman. It was my dad. Okay. That's not the common thought. A lot of these people look at their parents as a burden. <laughs> like, oh, they're trying to stop me from having fun. And that's why there, just need, there needs to be some real deal conversations. And there needs to be a connection there. So kids don't feel like we're trying to stop them from becoming them, their best selves, but like just realigning their purpose and letting them know, no, this is what you was created to do. Uh, you know, through your patience, you're going to be able to achieve so much more than what you thought going this other route, you know? It's just crazy. And even like with the Passover, and we have a, such a dope culture. There's no way that our people should be ashamed like how they are ashamed. Agreed. I, I don't know how many scriptures I didn't read where the Most High is like, Israel, don't be ashamed. I'm your God. This is what it is. Don't be ashamed. And here we are still finding ways to not talk about the truth because your family makes you uncomfortable, not want to call off your job because oh, I already got two strikes. And if I tell them I can't work the side, if it's going to be an issue to hell with all of that, I'm not ashamed. Uh, I'm going to let you know exactly what it is up front. This is what I'm on. You know, can you accommodate? Yes or no? Yes. All right, cool. You change your mind later. We got to go to court. Uh, it's simple. I think it, it goes back into the beginning of our conversation as far as when you was talking about how people run away from their purpose. Mm -hmm. You could make this truth as beautiful as you want it to be, as cool as you want it to be, as appealing as you want it to be. But you got to have the confidence behind what you're doing first. Because if you don't have the confidence behind it, that's when you're going to have your doubts. That's when you're going to feel ashamed. And that's when you you know, you're not going to enjoy it as much. It's like, no, like, same thing you like, all right, you got a nice outfit, and you don't know how other people going to think about it. But it's like, if you love it and you rocking it, that's your confidence. And through your confidence, they're going to like it. They're going to be like, okay, I see where you're yeah, going with that. Yeah. It's the same exact thing with not the scriptures and the law. But I like how he doing it, like, all of that. You feel me? Exactly. Through, it's crazy, bro. <laughs> Through us understanding our purpose, loving it and having confidence in it, we have the ability to impact and change people's lives. Watch this. Go to um, Judith. 
I feel like this is a perfect scripture for what we're talking about. Judith chapter 8. And it kind of goes back into the conversation we was having about, you know, thinking with a more holistic mindset. Because watch how this sister got down. I, I wish I could give y'all the whole chapter. But in short, you know, the children of Israel, we were facing uh, captivity. There was an army that was coming up against us. And they had basically made a decree because we was all the way at the top of this mountain. They were all the way at the bottom. They said, hey, if you guys don't come out and surrender, we're going to come up there and kill all you guys. And what they started doing was they started cutting off water and food supply because you can't come up and down the mountain. They had it shut off. So the nation is stripping like, man, this is the most high delivering us up. Let's just quit. It took a sister to come up and correct all of the leaders and the rulers like brothers. Akim, y'all tripping right now. Whether the Most High wants us to die here on this hill or go down there into slavery, it's choice. But don't ever, you know, try to, like, give the Most High ultimatum because that's what they was doing. It was like, well, if God doesn't save us in this many days, then we're going to give up. And she got offended, like, nah, y'all can't do that. And she went about correcting them in such an excellent way. But let's read this. This is the main part. Uh, Judith 8 and verse, do I want to start at verse 24? Yep. Judith 8 and verse 24. And this is a sister because they swear Israelite men just oppress women and women is just doormats. No, we have honorable and respectable women in this Bible who we love and we keep in, in honor. Go ahead. Now, therefore, O brethren. Brethren, go ahead. Let us show an example to our brethren. Let us show an example to our brethren, meaning let us, let the works that we do today be an example to the rest of our people. Go ahead. Because their hearts depend on us. Well, believe it or not, there are so many of our people who will never have the courage to do what it is that we're doing. And they have to see you just to be able to get that push. And it's not to say that we're, you know, irreplaceable. But the Most High has you doing what you're doing for a reason. You're here to impact somebody who was of less faith than you. So now you have to be that bridge for them. Go ahead. And the sanctuary. So the minds, the hearts, our people's minds depend on us. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that if we wasn't out here teaching truth, it wouldn't be someone else. But we're doing it right now. We're out here showing our people that we are the people of this book. We are the children of Israel. We have to come back to these laws, statutes, and commandments. The reason why we came into slavery to begin with is because we broke God's laws. And he's taxing us every single year until we repent. So it says their hearts depend on us and the sanctuary. The sanctuary had everything to do with the worship of our father, God. our culture. If we're not going to be out here teaching our culture, who is? You think Esau, our enemy, the white man's going to teach Israelite culture? They, they barely given us Juneteenth. You're right. <laughs> how, how many more hundreds of years until they got to teach us, yeah, you guys are actually the children of the book? Never. And then it's probably going to be another couple of hundred years where they say, hey, now you guys uh, got to wear fringes. We can't depend on them to teach us our culture. That's all on us. Go ahead. And the house. And the house. Read. And the altar rest upon us there's so much that the most high has delivered unto us that we're now responsible for for getting into our people we have to make this truth look appealing we have to make this look like the best thing there is on earth because that's the god that we serve god. how you make this truth look is safe to say is a reflection of how you feel about your god i know when i step out i try to make people look at what i'm doing like man i want to do what you're doing bro that's dope and, and I brag about our culture because it's fire. Agreed. Every year during dedication, I'm hitting people up. Hey, when have you ever partied eight days straight? God. Not never. <laughs> and if you did, it was not for a righteous cause. I'm doing something that's biblical, bro. Right. And you know what they'll say? Yeah, you right, bro. I ain't, gonna, shh, I ain't never. I can't hang, man. Y'all, I'm going to leave that to y'all. <laughs> but this is, what, this is really what it boils down to, though. God. And, and it's dope to hear this coming from a sister. But it just lets you know how far we've fallen because this isn't even the common thought amongst men. Right. The men was the ones, the forefront, you know, leading. The, the sisters were secondary because they still had to lead the house. You don't have men talking about it. So off top, you don't have the women talking about it. And now guess who's not talking about it? The children. The children. And we, we keep repeating this cycle. But going back to what we was talking about, there needs to be a greater appreciation for what the Most High has done for us. And we need to show that by having more patience. It's not going to happen today. You got to be okay with that. It's not going to happen next week. You have to be okay with that. But you can't complain about the results that you're not getting from the work that you're not putting in. You can't just sit there and complain like, oh, nothing is happening. I'm not getting what I want. And you want you putting in little to no effort to try to achieve that. 
We sitting there saying, oh, we fight. We trying to go home. We trying to get the kingdom. But what are you doing to make that a reality? Right? Go to uh, Job. Uh, I did, but we're kind of running on time. When y'all get a chance, read Judas uh, chapter 8, verses 24 through 27. And I like verse 27 because it talks about he's not, I'm going to just read it real quick. It says, for he hath not tried us in the fire as he did them, talking about our forefathers. It says, for the examination of their hearts, neither hath he taken vengeance on us, but the Lord doth scourge them that come near unto him to admonish them. You got to know that if you truly seeking and searching the most high, he's going to do little things to prick you to see if you really in this for the long haul. He already proved our forefathers. That's why I said he's not trying to prove our hearts because the covenant's already in Israel, your, your forefathers did a well enough job. I made this covenant. Now I just want to see if you're going to do your part. It's already a part of you. Literally. Like, he already, already know what's in you. I just want to see if you go to the occasion. But Silas in that. Some people, they get offended knowing that they're going to have a bumpy road. <laughs> you can't do that, you know? You just can't. But watch this. Let's go to the book of Job and give me chapter 33. The conversation been so good, I haven't even been going to the scriptures. <laughs> this really was supposed to be like a, a one-hour lesson, but we already approaching one hour. 33. Yeah, I want Job uh, 33, read verse 14. 33 and verse 14. Uh -huh. <clears throat> For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceived it not. There's so many times the Most High be trying to get our attention on stuff. So the Most High didn't told you once. You missed it. And he didn't found a way to tell you twice, and you didn't miss it. That's like that old uh, joke where they'd be like, it was a man stranded on an island, and, you know, people kept coming asking, do you need help? He's like, no, I'm going to wait for my God. And he ended up drowning or whatever. He go to heaven, like, how can you come and save me? He said, bro, I just sent you a boat, a helicopter. All these, that was me. You didn't get it, though, but go ahead. In a dream. Most High speaks to us in dreams. In a vision. In a vision. Sometimes you see things. Some people be like, man, the Most High told me. I don't be quick to be like, nigga, you lying, because maybe he did. Right. <laughs> but we got to take heed to that when he's speaking to us. Go ahead. In a vision of the night, uh -huh. when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumbering upon the bed. Go ahead. Then he opened, opened at the ears of men and sealed their instructions. See, we have instructions here on this earth. That's our purpose, but read on. That he may withdraw man from his purpose. That he may withdraw man from his purpose, because we're not supposed to be living after our own purpose. We're supposed to go off the purpose of the Most High. Huh. Read. And hide pride from man. Because when you start to get pride, then comes the fall. Huh. This is what I want to do. Well, that's not the will of the Most High. So expect uh, a crash landing. You know, uh -huh. you're going you're gonna to fall hard. Because that's not what the Most High intended for us. And accept it. And, and accept it. Find comfort in that. My thing is this. Why, why wouldn't you find comfort in it? The crazy part about it, though, is people get so caught up in trying to find out what their destiny is. If it didn't happen, that wasn't your destiny. <laughs> so find out what your true destiny or purpose is. Clearly. It's, it's, and it's a beautiful saying, you know, that anything that I lost, it wasn't for me. Uh -huh. And I don't want anything that's not for me. The Most High, he'll give you certain things sometimes just to test your loyalty because the Most High is a man of loyalty. Uh, you know, blood makes a lot of people related, but loyalty is what makes you family in the eyes of the Most High. And Christ even had to tell the people, like, look, Christ, your mom and your brother and your sister, they're looking for you. He said, who is my mama? Who is my brothers and my sisters? But those that do the will of the Father. That's what we have to realign ourselves with, understanding that the purpose that he has called. And the thing is, we're not bigger than our king. Yahweh Shai came, we forget that. He came and lived a life. He was, he was older than us when he died. And it, it took you a cool little minute to get where you at. So he had to live a whole life on behalf of his people, right? Keeping it kosher, keeping it with a, a holistic mindset. And he laid the foundation. He said, now follow suit. I'm the king and I came here as a servant. Follow my lead. And then when your time come, y'all going to be kings and y'all going to have your own servants. It's, it's only right, but that's when you, we start getting into the conversation about repentance because, you know, we keep talking about, okay, cool, our purpose, the duty of man is to keep God's laws. When you break God's laws, that's sin. So we need to get to a place as a people where we're, we're going to stop sinning against the Most High. So I got a couple of scriptures on that. Um, give me Romans chapter 12.
and you can start at verse 1. Romans 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, brethren, I, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You see, we got to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. That means the, the old you, the, the old way you thought, aspirations that you may have had that went against the will of the Most High, you got to kill it daily. Mm -hmm. You have to die every single day to what it is you want to do because it's not about us. It's about the Most High. Mm -hmm. Read. Holy, acceptable unto God. Holy, acceptable unto God. Because it's easy to do things that's acceptable in the eyes of men. Uh -huh. Well, the homies is cool with it. The homegirls is cool with it. Yeah, but the most high not cool with y'all. Go ahead. Which is your reasonable service. Reasonable service. The only person that provides a service is a servant. Right. <laughs> As glorious as the Most High has made us and as many talents that the Most High may have endowed you with, you're a servant first and foremost to your God and secondarily to your people. Uh, you're supposed to find a way to use what the Most High gave you to retain the souls of our people. Yeah, you're the dopest at dancing, but don't use that as an opportunity to go and strip down a pole. Right. Find a way to use that to, to keep your people, you know, solid and keep the culture thriving. Man, you know it's crazy even that you bring that up. There's so many times where I'm like, dancing used to be such a ceremonial type of thing. Mm -hmm. And you don't see that as much at all within our, in our culture. No, no you do. It's just not in the same spirit. Ceremonial? Yeah. Like, you got the wedding turnups and all of that, but it's just ratchet now. Oh, I feel like, like, even like in times of war, there was dances and things God. that we did. So we still doing all the same stuff. It's just the, the intent is off now and the spirit is off. True. Everything has been perverted. Uh, like, people have been getting married since the beginning of time, but look at the marriages that we, oh, we spent 100000 on the wedding. It's like, but y'all don't even love each other. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just burnt. Everything is burnt out. But I, I agree, like, man, just having the ceremonial dances and stuff like that, praise dancing was a real thing to where uh, you've seen that person move like, man, I got to do better. <laughs> I got to really. be a better person. <laughs> Based off how this person is dancing to, to magnify the most high. Like, it's, uh, it's crazy. But go ahead. And be not conform, conformed to this world. So that's the thing. We can't be conformed to this world. Because this world teaches you to go against God and it teaches you to go against yourself. Uh, it was humbling to have conversations with my brothers and sisters over there in the Philippines. And I asked them, like, so what type of history do they teach you in school? About your ancestors. They said, yeah, well, no, they, they teach us our ancestors were dark. They had, uh, you know, broad noses, big lips, but they were ugly. Mm. Now we desire the straighter hair, the, the lighter hair, the lighter skin. Mm. <laughs> this world is teaching you to go against yourself. You know it's going to teach you to go against your God. We can't be conformed to this. And we hear these scriptures, but then what's the regimen like to, to exercise these things out of you? Oh. Because we was already part of the now it's supposed to be that detachment period where we're growing unto Christ. So what are you doing to detach from the world? A lot of us is just a step ahead of people in the world. You that same nigga, that same female, you just got all your fringes. Unfortunately. Go ahead. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the whole thing. The mindset has to change. It has to. That's the only way you're truly going to be renewed. Uh, That's why people get so caught up on, you know, water baptism when water baptism was just symbolic. You take a shower every single day, at least I hope, and you come out still on BS. Your mind is what has to be washed. Uh, they call it brainwashing. You need to be brainwashed for righteousness sake. But go ahead. That you may prove what is that you may prove what is that good. No, that we may guess that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The only way you're going to do that is if you do it. It's like when you have a fear and you're trying to overcome that fear. The only way you're going to overcome it is once you do it. Then you get to the other side and be like, damn, I was tripping all these years for nothing. That's why I love, and it's crazy because there's certain sports that you can do and certain things that you can do in your life that will help you later on, right? Uh, my main sport that I did growing up was skateboarding. That's a completely... I'm not going to say completely. That's like an 80% mental sport. You're looking at objectives like, whoo, 
How many stairs is that? I got to figure out a way to jump down this and still land on my board and not break my ankles. Right. It's a lot of fear within skateboarding, but I love the regimen of like just, all right, you pulling up to it, like, all right, cool, next time. You go up, next try, next try. You, you, you walking commit. yourself off that ledge in your mind, you said, I'm doing it. You commit to it, mm -hmm. land it, and you feel so much better about yourself, like, wow. Now you practice that and you take that into the real world. Some people are scared to take chances on themselves because they've never had those moments where they had to get over themselves. Uh, oh, I'm not good enough. Ah, I know I'm dope, but am I really like, get over yourself. Are you a child of the most high or not? You know? Was that all of that? Huh. Um, Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. Because it said we have to prove that what is that perfect will of the most high. This is what's perfect. Go ahead. 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. The laws of God are perfect. If you keep the laws of God, wouldn't that make you perfect? Uh, Go ahead. Converting the soul. That's what's going to convert your soul. I don't care how many uh, crystals you put around your house for good energy. You People was rocking the, the copper necklaces to keep their energy pure and they burning the sage. That's not going to convert your soul. And also, like, explain converting. <laughs> that's, that's a whole problem. I'm going to get the definition of convert for one because we're going to bring this to life for people. Because it, that goes, that's going to be the question of what is it converting it from. Exactly. Exactly. There has to be an A and B comparison. Mm -hmm. This is the definition of converting. To bring over from one belief, view, or party to another. To bring about a religious conversion. To alter the physical or chemical nature of properties, especially in manufacturing. To change from one form or function to another. So going back to that scripture we went in Proverbs, there's a way that seemeth right. right. <laughs> it needs to be converted. Come on, look at this one. To alter for more effective utilization. Huh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're supposed to be effective in this truth. Huh. You're supposed to be able to come into this truth and have an effect on people. The only way you're going to come about doing that is understanding what you're in this for to begin with huh. and letting that shine. Some people try to dull and darken their light, bro, and I don't know why. I can only pray that the Most High keeps the spirit that I have in me and, and allows it to grow and abound to, to greater levels of faith. But I just, I, I just, I don't understand the times. I, I don't want to understand because I don't want to be in that mindset. But for these people of our nation who struggle with just loving and trusting the most high. And it's not to say that we don't have our moments. You feel me? We're all growing. It's a day-to-day it's -day walk. But for you to all out distrust in the most high and his ability and what he can do for you, to be effective in your nation is crazy. Uh, it's crazy. Um, only got a couple more scriptures. I ain't going to hold you guys all night. I hope you're enjoying the lesson, sis. All praises. Let's go to Sirach 32 and 14 in the Apocrypha. Sirach 32 and verse 14. Uh-huh. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. Wasn't we talking about that earlier? And throughout this lesson and just meditating on it, I see how effective having that discipline is. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's needed. Without discipline, and it's crazy because people will convince themselves that they're not disciplined, but whatever you do is a discipline or a pattern, you know, like, oh, what did you do today? I didn't do nothing. Well, that's what you're disciplined in, doing nothing. That's, that's your <laughs> routine. Uh, and then you got some people go above and beyond, and they really search out the matter. And it's like, oh, no, I've perfected this discipline, and these are the fruits that I can show. Uh, you know, everything is a discipline, right? So it says, those that fear the Most High will receive his discipline. Go ahead. And they that seek him early shall find favor. Everybody has an opportunity to serve the Most High. When, when are you going to choose to serve him? Because mm -hmm. the Most High isn't begging anybody. He said, look. Look at your forefathers. I love them so much that I was willing to make, you know, a covenant with they seed forever. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this is what I'm going to give you if you do well, and this is what you got waiting on you if you want to disobey. The choice is yours. Most High was so fed up with Israel on so many different accounts in the Bible. <laughs> you feel me? You read certain. Look. No, for real. I remember my first time reading the book of Judges, like my first year in the truth. I was just like, no, again, like, oh. And the children of Israel did evil. I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then here we are, I'd be looking at my people and the nonsense that they be on. I'd just be like, man, you know we Israel. I'd be seeing these other nations, they go all out for their idols. They'd be willing to cut themselves and throw themselves off of buildings for their idols. They don't even have a living God, and we do, and we just be stiff-necked and hard-headed. It's, it's truly amazing, truly amazing. Go uh, read verse 15. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith. When you seek the law, because even within the Israelite community, there's people keeping laws that they're comfortable with keeping because that's just what they leaders is on. This is what my leader taught me, and I'm good with it. I don't really seek out the matter to see if there's anything more. I had a conversation with a brother from another camp, and it was a respectful build, but I was getting in his ass about that new moon. I said, ah, I'm, I'm showing you like 10 references in history showing that historically our people kept the new moon at the first light, the first crescent. When it says watch for the new moon, what are you watching for if you can't see anything? And this is not a, you know, a slight to brothers, because we used to keep the so-called dark moon, which is, that's some, some nigga knowledge, nigga logic, because it's not called a dark moon. It's called the, um, the, uh, ah, oh, I just had a brain fart. Um, astronomers, uh, my goodness, I'm having a brain fart. Basically, science gave it its term. It's, uh, Astro something moon, my goodness, I'm going to get it for you guys. Hold on. Got to bring it out. But I was getting in them showing, like, I, this is what it is. This is what makes the most sense scripturally. And not only that, you had councils of people during the time of Christ, the, um, uh, the first AD, showing that, yeah, they went outside and they watched the new moon. When they saw it, they blew the horn. So it's, that's what Christ was keeping at the new moon at that time. Yeah. Last time I checked, Christ kept the law perfectly. You know, it just makes sense. But uh, let me give you that term real quick. Uh, real quick. New moon. Uh, that's crazy. They're going to get on me about this one. I'm literally having a brain fart. But even when you go to this, right, it says this is a simulated image of the new moon. That's the crescent. It says, uh, a simulated image of the traditionally defined new moon, the earliest visible waxing crescent. Uh, I want to say it's the astronomical new moon, bro, because I can't find it on here. Astronomical new. Yes, it's called the astronomical new moon. Sorry about that, y'all. Back to the point, though. Had a big, uh, a, a great build with him, and I'm showing him, right, this is what it is, but his mind wasn't set on seeking the law of the Most High. He could have barely easily been like, right, you know what, I appreciate that. Let me take this back and do my comparisons. He gave me some bogus response, like, right, we just got to, you know, do what we know the best to do. And I'm like, so if, if I think eating pork is okay, I can just do that? You know, so people, they pick and choose. But the whole point is, when you seek the law of the Most High, you will be filled therewith. He will bring you the understanding. Mm -hmm. The only way we can get out of captivity is by keeping the law of God. Why would he allow that the one thing for us not to be able to understand? It just doesn't make sense, right? But go ahead. But the hypocrite will be offended thereat. Yeah, someone who doesn't really want to seek the law of the Most High, when you go about showing them, it's like same thing with sisters. Hey, sis, you can't be talking to your husband this way. Thus saith the Lord. If she wants to continue to talk to her husband that type of way, she will be offended that you're trying to correct her. Brother, you can't be cutting off your beard. If he wants to rock the booty face, he going to be offended. And that's just what it is. So the whole thing is we have to put ourselves in a space to seek the Most High and understand that you need to have patience on that road. It's, it's, it's a, a very cold road at times, but it's beautiful because the Most High just really shines light on you as an individual and your people and how you've treated the Most High. 
Okay. It's a lot of times we just got to sit and like, man, I can see how we did this to the most high. And I don't like my feeling right now, so I can understand how my father in heaven felt when such and such was going on. Right? Let's go to... I want to get the book of, because we can close it out with this one. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 14, and verse 26. John 14 and verse 26. Uh Uh-huh. But the comforter... Which is the Holy Ghost. Which we brought out earlier showing that that's a discipline. You got to be disciplined in these laws of the Most High to even receive the comfort, the comforting spirit. It. Whom the Father will send in my name. Uh-huh. He shall teach you all things. You have to put yourself in a space to where you want to be taught. Uh-huh. You want that comforting spirit. So many people don't find comfort in this truth. They find their walk so unstable and so depressing and so such a burden is because you haven't connected. And you be taught with your guards up. Heck no. Heck no. You can't. It's impossible. You need to be a sponge. A, a sponge doesn't have a say so on how much water it, it absorbs. It just takes it in. Mm-hmm. You need to be a sponge. You need to come in this with the understanding that I'm not right. I need to be fixed. Mm-hmm. I don't know the answers. And so many people refuse to do that. Like, I remember when we first came in, <clears throat> this is a... When we was uh, going back and forth um, to Taiwan's house, and uh, I remember the first time we went over there, he was like, because I had been doing just a little bit of studying. You know, your first year in the truth, the studying that you do is like light years above Christianity. I was figuring out all types of stuff. So he was like, okay, cool, cool. You in the truth? Uh, so what all do you know? And I'm like, man, you know, I felt good. Like, okay, well, I know this, this, that. And he's looking at me like, and? And I'm like, oh, shit, that's all I had, you know, okay, well, maybe I need to be taught. Tell me more, you know, but more, most people don't do that. They'll be like, I'm good with what I have, and you can't teach me nothing. You have to be in a space to where your guard is completely down, and you're open. You, ha- you have to open yourself up, and it's, it's in all type of ways. Like, if you're having a conversation with somebody, you can't be, you know, looking this way, and they talking. You have to open yourselves up. Like, let them pour into you. Literally, we're vessels, right? But read on. Uh, he shall teach you all things uh-huh. and bring all things uh, to your remembrance. Because a lot of these things was already within us. We just forgot. But then you start to remember yourself. The scriptures say that. We're going to remember ourselves in these last days. And all the various places where we're scattered, we're going to keep these commandments, and the Most High is going to show you about yourself and what it is he wants you to do. Go ahead. Whatsoever I have said unto you, uh huh. peace I leave with you, my peace I give on to you. And he gives us peace. The peace that we have is that, dude, we already know where we're going. We was, we was confused in the world. I remember times where I doubted if God existed only because I didn't understand my circumstances. If someone would have told me, like, hey, nigga, you cursed, I'd have been like, okay, cool, thank you. At least, But I didn't know. So I'm like, man, is this God really even a thing? Oh, praise be to the most high I'm here to, at, the, at this time, right? Okay. But he gives us peace because we understand that this walk is not going to be your walk in the park. I appreciate that more instead of being blindsided by a bunch of BS. He says, no, just no. It's going to be some stuff. But surround yourself around people that's going to have, they best in, have your best interest in their heart because you guys can hold each other up. Let the most high work. Literally. Yeah. Find comfort in that. The fact that Christ didn't want to die, but he still went. I said, man, okay, I can find comfort with this. I know this isn't, isn't something that's just taxing to me. Like, no, my king went through it too. He didn't want to have to die. He didn't want to have to do what he did, but... He was that much of a real one and that much of a real man, you know? But go ahead. Peace I leave, I leave with you, my peace I give unto uh-huh. you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Right. He didn't give us the same type of peace that the world gives unto us because the things that the world gives you that is peaceful is carnal. Oh, man, I got me a, a big new house. Like, oh, you at peace. But that's just another burden. You got to pay for that thing every month, right? Got this car. I get to travel here, but that's all temporal. The peace that he gave us is supposed to be everlasting. Whether you have a good day or a bad day, you should be able to go to sleep at peace, knowing what it is. Like, man, I'm doing the right thing every single day. I'm living for a cause that's worth dying for, worth living for. 
Most people don't want to even join things that they don't even feel like is worth their time. I'm here every week. All praise be to the most high. Right? So he didn't give us no superficial peace. He gave us everlasting peace. Go ahead. Let not your heart be troubled. And with that, don't let your heart be troubled. Why are you sitting here tripping when you know you got to go through stuff? Or even worse, you know that you've been sinning and now the most high pulling your card. How do you feel a type of way about that? Right. And I know the most high just be up there like, bro, come on, man. For real, though. Mm -hmm. We're servants. None of this is superficial. It's all very real. As, as, as much as the world wants to push spirituality, they somehow miss this part of it. <laughs> but go ahead. Neither let it be afraid. And don't be afraid. We got a lot of things that we got to face in these upcoming years. We shouldn't be troubled or afraid of it because that just means we're that much closer to going home. Uh, I'm not saying don't be scared, but you can never let fear cripple you. Uh, you can never be scared to the point to where you cannot act and move. That's unacceptable. I had a couple other scriptures in, in, in line, but I don't even think we need to go to them. I felt like the conversation as a whole touched on the scriptures that I wanted to bring out. And that's the beauty of it, too. Like when you were saying making the Bible and reading more of a repetition, it becomes your conversation. Uh, you know, like you, I, can, I can say, hey, I, you don't need to be murdering without saying Exodus 20. Like you can talk the scriptures, you know. And uh, I think that's why it translates so good in our music. All praise be to the most high. All praise be to the most high. Um, Israel, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I feel like it's been a, a lovely segment, episode nine. You know, you guys go back and get the notes if you came in a little bit later on the lesson. Um, I guess if I just wanted to leave you with anything, it would be to off top trust in the most high, but trust in yourself. You know, you didn't come this far for no reason. The most high has given you things. He's equipped you with things to make you ready for this fight that we fight, and it's a spiritual war. So just believe in yourselves more, you know, be more optimistic, and try to dwell in the spirit that Christ dwelt in when he was on this earth. All right, Israel? You got anything, my brother? You got anything, sis? Any questions before we wrap up or anything? Um, just one question. Yes. How do you know uh, what's the best way to decipher whose talking to you, whether it's you, mm. the most high, or the Satan? It's a great, great question. Go to Isaiah chapter 8. Yeah, the sister asked the question, when you're having those moments in your head, when you're trying to decipher and figure out what's the best plan of action, how do you know who's talking to you? Is it your own thoughts? Is it the most high talking to you? Or is it Satan? How do you help decipher that? Go to the book of Isaiah chapter 8 and read verse 20. Isaiah 8 and verse 20. To the law... And to the testimony. So to the laws of this Bible and to the testimonies of righteous men and women who did things that was pleasing unto the most high. Those two things, right? Go ahead. If they speak not according to this word, uh -huh. it is because there is no light in them. If something is telling you, and that's why you have to have a good understanding and foundation in this Bible. If it's telling you to go against the law of the most high or telling you to do something that is not viewed as righteous according to this Bible... It's either you and you having a bad moment or it's Satan. The Most High is always going to lead you on a path of righteousness. The, the Bible says he gives no man license to sin. Because some people would be like, well, you know what? I had to take this job that works on the Sabbath because, you know, the Lord knows I was in a financial crisis and they gave me 80000 per year. That was Satan, bro. And you gave in. Most High was just saying, if you just would have held out, I had another job for you where you didn't have to break no Sabbath. I was going to give you 120 a year. So that's, that's really the thing. The, the Bible is our filter. That's You got to filter all your thoughts, anything you want to do in life through the Bible. Try to find a testimony of somebody who was going through something similar or trying to look for a, a certain, I guess, or a similar uh, result. Go through the law like, okay, I'm not breaking no laws. I can see such and such did this. I think the Most High is telling me to move on it. And it's subjective, right, because I don't know what people were asking for and the voices they're hearing. But that's generally the safest way to go about it. Just filter through the law of the Most High. Mm-hmm. Come on, all praises, sis. All right, Israel. Well, we're going to close out. Um, get ready for Room 144 coming up next. And Shabbat Shalom to the 12 tribes scattered abroad.